Welcome everyone to this 3D font quick tip. I recently created a font pack that contained Element 3D presets and it was called Smooth. It contained uppercase letters and numbers. But today I wanted to discuss the reasons why I created it and how. So when you normally create 3D text or logos and things of that description, you're normally going to be confronted with this type of extrusion. It has a flat face and really your options are really all about this bevel. The amount of bevel, uh, the number of bevels and so on. Uh, Element actually gives you some uh, presets for that are quite good give you ideas helps you discover how element actually builds this you can look at the description in here the uh, the parameters that have been chosen and uh, learn by what has been created but no matter what you create you're always going to be confronted with this flat face and when you're trying to create a font or a text object or a logo that's readable, the reflections really help. And this bevel on the outside captures the specular highlight there. That's great. But it's very difficult to get a decent reflection on the front face. I've always been a big fan of Cinema 4D and its ability to... deal with that by a shading technique that splits up the font so that the at least the front face of the uh, text object or logo is separated and the front face is then shaded smooth giving you the perception that it's actually inflated a little bit uh, it's a great technique, but it has its uh, drawbacks. It doesn't change the profile of the object and uh, doesn't change the geometry and is an optical illusion, effectively. So normally, in a 3D application, this is what you're going to be confronted with. And it's very difficult to create other types of font faces. But I found that there is an easy way to actually create something that is inflated on the surface, uh, front and rear, uh, to your specifications, actually changes the geometry, gives you that ability to capture the reflection, and is quite easy to do, but not in most 3D applications we actually have to go to a 2D application to build this model. The application I'm talking about is Photoshop. And I'll show you how I did it. So let's grab a new document. Now, I have a 3D tab open. If you don't have that, it is just a checkbox in your Windows drop-down box. So we need something to extrude, so let's choose a letter. And here is our design. So in our 3D tab, we have this checkbox, 3D Extrusion. I encourage you to check out these others. But we're interested in this one here, 3D Extrusion. And then click Create. Straight away, you have a 3D object. And again, as in most applications, it has a flat front face. So before we begin, I just want to add another light to make this rear surface uh, a little bit more easier to see. So I'll choose the infinite light that's there. Uh, choose a new one and just, just position it a little bit. And that's all I want to do, just for the creative side of things. 
So we choose our extruded object. We have here a graphical representation of a drop down box that gives you certain presets. I encourage you to experiment with these because they're not like anything else you're going to find in a normal 3D application. You could probably create some of these with some effort, but the one we're interested in for this tutorial is this one here, just says inflate. We'll click on that and straight away we have an extruded object that has an inflated front face that's quite smooth. Now in every other 3D application that is never going to be a one-click solution but in Photoshop it is. So let's have a look at some of the parameters. We have our shape presets. We've already chosen the inflation. We have this uh, capping this bevel uh, area has to do with a section of the front face that is along the very edge and I actually chose 4% to capture any highlights along that leading edge of the font and I kept it at 45 degrees but this uh, front face is far too inflated but you have an option to create whatever look you're after. I simply chose 30% and I'm almost done. The only problem here is that the back face isn't being uh, extruded. We have this drop down box. It's dealing just with the front sides, but I want front and back. Now, even though I've chosen that, it hasn't actually updated until I click this little diamond. And within a few clicks, I've actually created something that's very difficult to do in any other 3D application. So, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with my design. Now I want to get it out of Photoshop because I want the flexibility of using either Element or some other 3D application. How do I do that? I simply click the object itself. You can tell that with the extruded T. Right click, export mesh. Uh, you can leave everything at default and click OK. It's then going to ask you where to save this file. Choose a file name, of course, and click save. And we are effectively done with Photoshop. So the model format is in Collada. You can practically bring that into any 3D application and it will run perfectly. In Element 3D, however, it prefers the OBJ format. So to create the pack, I brought the Collada models into my 3D application of choice, which is Blender. I highly encourage you to check out Blender, particularly now with 2.8, although at this point in time, it's still in beta release, but will soon be officially released and is well worth looking into. So in Blender, I simply opened up and imported the Collada file. And if you're new to 3D, you're going to come across this problem in most packages that you are using, and that is scale differences. So at the moment, you can't see that uh, object in the 3D viewport, but it's there. It's just extremely small. Every time I would have to set the origin to the geometry and then simply scale by a thousand actually. And there is the 3D model. It has the beveled edge that I want. It has the inflated surface that I want, that I'm happy with. 
And once I had inspected the mesh and made sure that everything was okay, I simply had to export it as an OBJ. Rename, export. So there we have it. I highly encourage you to check out Photoshop with its extrusion capabilities. I hope this tutorial was helpful. My name is Martin Staley. Thanks for watching.